Let's talk about transformations for five minutes. If you have this function f of x, and this is the series of transformations, you can see a, b, h, and k are parameters that you can use for transformations. I will go through each one of them. So if you have y equals a times f of x, then you can consider that as a vertical stretch by a factor of a. And if a is negative, then there's also a reflection. But if you're just talking about the value of a, the absolute value of a, then that is a vertical stretch by a factor of a. Also recognize that you can also see it this way, y over a. If this is a fraction or if there's fractions, then you'll have to keep that in mind. But you can also rearrange this to say y is equal to a times f of x, and then you'll be able to see it clearly. Here, horizontal stretch factor by a factor of 1 over b. If y is equal to f of b of x, remember that this b value is different than what the horizontal stretch factor is. They are reciprocals. b, if this is 2, then it's a horizontal stretch factor of a half. If b is 1 third, then the horizontal stretch would be 3. And here is the replacement of x becomes b of x. Y equaling negative f of x is a vertical reflection. You can think of it, the y values change, but you can also think this is a reflection about the x-axis. Y becomes negative y. If you have y equals f of negative x, that's a reflection about the y-axis. So here is the y-axis, and this would be a reflection from positive x to a negative x or vice versa. And x is replaced with negative x. Here, y f of x plus k is a vertical translation k units in the y, y direction. So if k is positive, it's going to move up. If k is negative, it's going to move down. So here's a replacement y being replaced with y minus 3 is actually, this is the k value of positive 3. But you can also see, see it this way. If you had y minus 3 is equal to f of x, if you rearrange it, you can see that it is the old f of x plus 3, 3 units up. If x is replaced with x minus h, this is a horizontal translation, h units in that x direction. If h is positive, then it moves to the right. If h is negative, it moves to the left. For example, you can see x is replaced with x plus 3. This is 3 units to the left. x minus 4 would be 4 units to the right. Other transformations that you'll have to remember, the inverse function, if it is an inverse, if the inverse actually is a function, you can use this notation, y equals f of negative 1 to the x, f inverse x, or you can use x equaling f of y if the inverse is not a function. Remember that you may have to restrict the domain of the original in order to make sure that the inverse is a function. For an inverse, it's a reflection in the line y equals x. The domain, of course, becomes a range. The range becomes the domain. Remember from last unit that you're going to interchange x and y coordinates. So you can see that from a graph, you can take specific coordinates. To make the inverse, you can switch the x and y uh, coordinates in the ordered pair. If we're talking about the order of transformations, we're going to follow this order. Stretches, vertical and horizontal stretches first. Reflections next, then followed by translations. If you're going to be determining the equation, then you're going to be using the replacements in the table that you see here. For example, if you had a vertical stretch um, by a factor of 3 and a reflection, then you could say this is y is equal to a times f of x. Then you can replace y with negative y if it's a, a uh, vertical reflection. So negative y equals a to f of x, and then y is equal to negative a f of x, something like that. It's important to know when you have invariant points, so they do not change. A vertical stretch affects y values. So if you have x-intercepts where the y's are equal to 0, those are invariant under, under a vertical stretch. A horizontal stretch will affect the x values. Now, y-intercepts are where the x value is equal to 0, so those are invariant under a horizontal stretch. If you're talking about an inverse, points on the line y equals x will be invariant when you're talking about the inverse. And of course, if you have a net translation, it cannot yield any invariant points because every point moves. Important considerations, when you're determining a transformation or drawing it or, or otherwise, find the domain and range. How does it change? Look for max and mins, look for vertices, uh, those special points that will help you determine what it might look like. Find x-intercepts and y-intercepts if you can, either visually or using the equation. Remember, x-intercepts y equals 0, y-intercepts x equals 0. And that's important. You can let x equal 0 in the equation to try and find the y-intercepts. Find invariant points under transformations. Know that x-intercepts don't change under vertical stretches, y-intercepts don't change under horizontal stretches, and so on. Determine the image of the point x, y. You can think special points, right? Vertices, max, min, those will help you to determine what the function looks like. Look for asymptotes, especially for rational functions. You know, the normal asymptote for rational functions is y equals 0, and x is equal to 0, but that will change according to your transformation. Remember, remember to factor out the b value before you determine the horizontal translation. For example, f of 2x minus 6 is a vertical stretch of a half. Remember that the b value is the reciprocal of the stretch factor, followed by a horizontal translation of 3 to the right. Once you've factored out this, this b value, then you can see that it's a horizontal translation of 3 to the right. Also, notice mapping notation. Notice how it's different than replacement. If it talks about mapping notation, it's going to look like this. You have an ordered pair of x, y goes to x plus 3, y plus 4. This is a mapping notation that tells you what happens to this x here. This x coordinate was x, and now you're adding 3 to that x coordinate. That's different than a replacement. Here, if you think about it, then you could say x is replaced with x minus 3, and y is replaced with y minus 4. These are replacements. That's not a mapping. Also, be familiar with all types of graphs. We have linear graphs, the quadratic, the cubic, absolute value, and rational. One that I didn't mention here, you have y is equal to square root x. That will be familiar with all the domain and range of all these graphs. And remember to use a graphing calculator if you need to. Okay, that's the review, and good luck.